And I got my guy Mud Dollars. I'm in, the cut, that's a scary sight. I'm in this thing, yeah. Yo, Face by Jew, we in the building. It's big ice water, you know. We can touch down in OKC. We here for real, though. Big ice water records in the building. Big ice water. The one and only Mud Dollars. Go ahead and give them the at name. The at on IG, at M U D D O L L A Z, Mud Dollars. You know what I'm saying? At Ice Water Records with an A, not an E-R. Ice Water. Yeah, Water, W-A-T-A. -A. Well, I'm definitely glad to have you on the pod. I interviewed your, your artist, Staff Man Boogie, okay. straight out of Oklahoma City. That's little bro. Straight from the north side. Amazing artist. I like his music. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. Tell the people how long you've been a manager and an artist, because you're an artist as well. Been doing the, the music thing since I was a kid. Maybe I started writing raps at nine years old. Um, but actually hitting the recording studio, I started maybe like 14. Okay. My, my first time really re real deal hitting the studio, getting to it. So you told me that you're from L.A. County. What part of L.A. County? I'm from Bellflower City. You know what I'm saying? But I, I didn't lived in Compton. I didn't lived in Long Beach. I done lived in Lancaster. Currently, I, I live in um, Las Vegas. My man's from the land, for real. No, for sure. Yeah. And I always can go back home. That, that's the thing, too. A lot of motherfuckers, they, they get out their they city or, you know, they, they, they got to um, go on a run for whatever reason, man. Right. I'm always able to, to go back home to my region and, and fuck with my people. So, like, that's a blessing. You know, I still got that love like that. I, um, I paid a lot of dues, you know what I'm saying? I came from being a... Um, Corner boy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I used to stand on them corners and, and pitch them stones and do all that. Yeah. I'm sure you talk about that in your raps. You just dropped a song not too long ago called Get Hibachi. The mm -hmm. beat, fire, bro. Yeah. The beat selection is just excellent, man. Yeah, I, I bring them samples to um my we have an in-house producer with Ice Water. He produced a lot of the, the catalog that we have up over there, Lil Psycho. So I just I bring them the idea. Tell them how I want them to flip it and go from there. Like I dig in the crates. I and I, I was just talking to Lil Blood about that last night. I'm like, man, everybody sample the same shit. Everybody. I'm not with that. I, I gotta find something that's outside the box that's gonna stand out when people hear it. They're gonna be like, what the fuck is that? Like, where he sampled that from? You know? And to piggyback off that, you know, I'm my clients know I'm a musical nerd. Okay. I'm tired, man. I'm tired of the same. Jagged Edge samples, Mariah Carey samples, like whatever Diddy did and Jermaine Dupri did, like we keep recycling that. Yeah. Now, the music is fire, yeah. but just like what you're saying, let's pull something out. Let's pull something from the 70s. Yeah. Um, what I, I've been doing, and I'm, I'm going to give some of my sauce, and I, you know what I'm saying? This, this game do cost. I've been fucking with them, them overseas. R&B artists, so like I go dig in the crates overseas. Okay. I've been doing that, like fucking with the independent artists. So I might find a record, you know, I'm just, I'm going to flip that bitch up. That Get, Get Hibachi, that's a song that came out in 2017 from um, an R&B group from, um, I think it's, I think, I think they from France. I think they from France, yeah. Okay, that's lit. Yeah. I like how the, the Asian cultures mm -hmm. will recreate some of our sounds. I think they do it pretty well. No, that's lit. That's yeah, lit. Because I wouldn't even expect a, that to be a, a sample from somebody from France. Yeah. The beat is hard. Get Hibachi by Mud Dollars. Go yeah. ahead and check that out. So, you started Ice Water with Slim 400. No, most definitely. We started uh, that maybe, um, the label been around maybe for at least seven years. But me and Slim, we, we connected over 15 years ago. You know, RIP my brother too. R.I.P. Slim 400. Salute as well. What What was the process whenever you all decided that you were going to sign Stackman Boogie? Take me through that. Okay, we started coming to Oklahoma City a few years back. Maybe it's been like three years we've been touching down out here, doing events. 
we we got the the marijuana strand with caviar gold called ice water, like the, the same as the label. So we would come out here like doing events with caviar gold, and at one of the um, meeting greets Slim had, Stackman Boogie pulled up and some of his homies. We've been locked in since that day. We heard his music; it was dope. For a slim pass, we was talking about expanding the roster. Yeah. And I was like, man, I th- we should sign Stackman from OKC. Like, I I like his vibe. Like, he, he a good young dude. You feel me? And he was like, yeah, let, let's do it. And he passed probably like two months after we had that conversation. Yeah. Well, but I made it happen, though. I yeah, made it happen. he made it happen. Yeah. Stackman got signed. He was doing going. his thing. Yeah. Uh, if y'all haven't heard of Stackman Boogie, go ahead and look him up right now. Yeah. He got, he got a few singles out there. We in the city. Um, the caviar, um, caviar gold party with him and Project Buddha. That's my favorite um, one. I ain't gonna lie. Today we we about to shoot the the tripping video with him and Lil Blood. Yep. Yeah, we, we brought Lil Blood from West Oakland out here. You know, Lil Blood, a Lil Blood TV. Shout out Lil Blood. You know what I'm saying, Lil Blood. Um, he fucked with um, Live Wire, Hair on Music. Yep. You know what I'm saying, good dude. You just put me on Lil Blood interviewing everybody on his podcast, Marshawn Lynch, O Three Greedo. So go ahead, shout out Lil Blood TV. Yes, sir. So what what was it like being friends with Slim? Like how how was he as a friend? Spontaneous, yeah. funny. He might get on your nerves, but that that was like my my baby brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he couldn't do no wrong in my eyes. I, I don't care if we we argue like cats and dogs. Like the next day or next week, we're gonna be back okay. Straight you know up. what I mean? Like that. That's what it was. A like real brotherhood. Um, I'm I'm not a yes man, so like we we clashed a lot about that, you know, because yeah. a lot of people just want you to see it their way. Mm-hmm. And it's like, nah, nigga, if you tripping and you doing something wrong, I'm gonna tell you. Like, I, I I be a I be a a whole ass nigga to just let you um, self destruct, you know. So, I always had his back whether he was right or wrong. Man, that's some real brotherhood right there. Shout out, man. Nah, just off the vibes, my man Mud Dollars A one. I can tell A one since day one. This is not a gimmick. What you see is what you get, no, man. Most definitely. What's the toughest part about being a manager? Shit, you 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 have to. It's it's long long days and um longer nights. Just mm. trying to create some for your artists, um especially if they just not a household name. You you have to have they have to give you something to manage. And a lot of artists just think I got a song, um. We good. Like, nah, it's a lot of other footwork you have to put in. You got to market yourself. Yep. Like, you got to be a likable motherfucker. Like, people want to be able to fuck with you and, and, and see you. And, like, that's the, the, the type of presence Slim had. Like, anywhere he would go, he, he stood out. He lit up the room everywhere he would go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that was kind of like a nigga having a cheat code, but we built it up. Like, even though he came from working with YG being... From doing merchandise to being YG's hype man to being on the, the album My Crazy Life to us opening up on the, the Fuck Donald Trump tour. Yeah. We, you know, we negotiating our, our deal with, with, with Gazi from Empire, okay. like while Slim is performing bruising and he going crazy at the Fox Theater. He like, so how much Slim won again? You know? Mm, like, so we, we get to them points and like every year, like we wrote down goals, like what we wanted to accomplish. And by, like, the middle of the year, like, we had accomplished, like, all the goals that we set at the beginning. You know, that's that's major. I I talk about goal setting, uh, intentions, Almost often, definitely. just with my clients. I mean, if you look, I got the stay low, stack high on them right now. That's that's the lifestyle brand. And, and that's really what it is, is setting goals, yeah. having intentions. And what I like to say, I, I write jujuisms, right? Okay. So every every single day I'm just writing something that is that's on my mind. Okay. And one of the jujuisms is success defined. Success is knowing where you are and knowing where you're headed and actively moving towards where you are headed. That is what I define as success. Okay. Now that's what's up. And and how you just said like you got your Jewisms. My woman, she always tell me, um, that I got mudisms. Mudisms. Yeah, you know, I got shit that I only I only say. Yeah. You know, keep it clean. You know what I'm saying? Excuses are useless and absolutely different things of that sort. You know what I mean? Hey, I, I like keep so it clean like, for like, sure. I, I like that, man. You know, Jewism. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it's it's a small world, you know, great minds think alike. They, yeah, they that's do. Dope. <laughs> now that's lit. That's lit that we both on the same shit right now. What's the most rewarding thing about being a manager? 
when you drop some material and it's um, the public re- receives it well and you get that, that love and admiration everywhere you go, like they they speaking on the, the project, like that's that's the reward. You know, fuck all the money shit. You want to... You want to put out great music like that. That's what we getting this shit for. If you're a musician, it's not just about making a hit. Like, yeah, like that's the reward, like being a platinum artist and all that shit. Right. But you want people to to feel and fuck with your music even beyond when that that hit plays out. You want people to stay there. You know what I mean? You want you want to build a cult type of following with the shit. Like that. That's how I look at it. You don't want to have to rely on the industry because they just looking for who's hot today. And right. You you want the people to fuck with you regardless. You want to have something built up. So if your shit ever like if they ever feel like they ain't fucking with you, the people fuck with you. That's one of my mudisms too. You can't blackball the streets. Ooh. The industry can blackball you like a motherfucker, but if the streets fuck with you, they can't never blackball the streets. Never ever. It's not gonna happen. Yo, that's that. But Say you that know, one more time. You, you can't blackball. You can't blackball the streets. You really can't though. Yeah, but I want the world. I ain't gonna lie to you. I want the world. I want the world. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we ain't striving for nothing less. You yeah. feel me? We ain't striving for nothing less. I was on your page, man, and I okay. see that you was posting a, a tour with yeah. Payroll Giovanni. Oh yeah, shout out um, Payroll Giovanni. I manage the artist Bank Aaron, okay. and um, we we doing like a little tour run. And um, I, I threw, um, I put a tour together this year too. I had the Big Clouds Music Festival, yeah. And I took it to, um, I think like eight different, eight different states. Oh, yeah, shit. yeah. That's it, man. Yo, shout out to Payroads. Now that you're here in the city, is there anything about the city that sticks out to you? Anything that you like about the city, Oklahoma City? I like how when I be seeing like the young dudes together, like Stack Man and his people, just how like they just it's a brotherhood. Like um, it's the song Project Buddha. He he had a line. He said, "Me and Nine didn't had no ride. We was walking to the stove." Mm. Like just like like I felt that. Cause, yeah, you know what I mean. Everybody ain't got no motherfucking car, and for a nigga not to be ashamed of how he come up, yeah, and to you know what I'm saying to display that. Like it's like I like that. Like that that rawness, that authenticity of Y'all music scene, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's like, that was one thing when I came out here, I was like, man, people need to um, know what's going on in Oklahoma City. I agree with that. And that's part of the why I'm doing the podcast, because I want to bring people from the city, even people no, like definitely. you that have a different perspective of the city. No, most definitely. And people like Stack, man, because, you know, I'm from the West Side. It's known yeah. I'm from the West Side. People knew me before I was a barber. Okay. You feel me? So the, there's different sides of towns, different politics. We, me and Stackman was talking about East Side full of Crips, West Side full of Crips and Bloods, North Side is all Bloods. Yeah. The South Side is Bloods and Mexicans. Okay. So it's like you got to know where you at on all sides of town. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I feel like it's similar to the land. Like you can't just be out here doing whatever on what side of town. Yeah. Like, I, I be going to the 405 um, shop over there. It's this dude Chuko. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yep. that's the only place I can find a motherfucking pro club in Oklahoma City. Hey, bro, I got a pro club City. on right now. <laughs> I got a, hey, that's, hey, that's first crazy. of all, first of all, I, I ain't gonna lie, I got my first pro clubs like a month ago. Oh, okay, okay. And it's not a thing here in the city. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't know about it. I put that heavyweight t-shirt on, I was like, bro, I'm <laughs> never wearing another t-shirt. <laughs> I'm not wearing this Hanes bullshit. What you mean? I'm not doing none of that. None of that. Well, I'm March, I fired. Fired. Straight pro clubs. Yeah. Straight up. Shout out to pro clubs, for real. Yeah, yeah. But, hey. I gotta put you on Shaka too. Shaka wear. Okay. They t shirts is um A one too. Yeah, I'm with you know that. What I'm, I'm with that. I always mention about the connection between LA and, and OKC. Okay. Can you confirm that? Can you confirm being from the land and coming to the city? Can you confirm that there's like some I feel like I feel like I'm at home. Like the, the Midwest and and just the vibe and, and they they fuck with the, the California music and they like that bass heavy shit. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the vibes is um, very similar, but y'all got your own thing going on here. You know what I'm saying? I I didn't saw some shit. Um, I came out here for um, Juneteenth yeah. the year before last. I think it was DJ Quick headlining. Yeah. And I, you know, I saw a gangster on a motherfucking horse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like hey. real deal, like OG, <laughs> like you know, straight up on the east, man. Uh huh. 
Shout it was dope, Spencer. though. I think we was at, I don't know if it was called Washington Park. I, I don't remember the name, but it was a big-ass park. Shout out Washington Park. That's that's where that's where my homies is from. Okay, okay. Um, over there, it's a lot of shotgun gangsta cribs. Yeah. So, Washington Park, that's what, that's where niggas is getting put on. And I used to have a studio in Shotgun Gangsta Crib Hood in um, L.A. off of um, Crenshaw and Rose Crenshaw. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I had a studio right there. Dang. You know what I'm saying? So I used to run into them dudes a lot and shit. Like, at yeah. the, there was a donut shop right there on the corner. And you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and they green rags too. And where, I, rags. And where I'm from, I, I'm a green rag. You okay. know what I'm saying? I'm from Bellflower, California. I'm from mm-hmm. um, Lur Gang. You know what I'm saying? 706 Hustlers. They, people know what's up, you know? Hey. For those who don't know, they do. Now, you know. Yeah. Before we get you out of here, I like for the guests to leave the viewers and the listeners with something good. Good music, good movie, book, good quotes. You can hit them with another mudism. Something good before we get up out of here. However you start, that's how you should finish. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't sleep on yourself. Don't wait for no one else. If you feel like you want to do it, you want to make it happen, go get it. Simple. Go do it. Straight up, man. Once again, it's Mud Dollars. It's phased by Jew. And you can see the fade now. It's all crisp. We got the man photo shoot ready. Get it together. Shout out to the land. Shout out to the city. And just like that, we out, man. I part you.